Hi, brothers and sisters. Today is Wednesday, August 3rd, 2016. Okay, so today was Amber's hearing. And let me tell you, the Lord says vengeance is mine. Okay, I am a child of the Most High God, of the Most High God. I am a child and I am a daughter of the King. And let me tell you something. When you mess with one of God's children, you're in trouble. And what I mean by that is, God knows what I've been going through with this girl, with my stepdaughter. I love her. I love her to death. I love her to pieces. I will do anything for her. And she is so hateful to me. So unbelieving, unbelievingly, unbelievably. I don't even know if that's a word. But anyway, she's just really hateful. Abundantly hateful. I don't even know. Like, and I deal with a lot take in a lot and God says for me to love her he, he, that's what he has called us to do is to love the unlovable and to trust him to pray for them and to trust him so I'm enduring this this attitude and I'm praying for her and I'm enduring and I'm praying and enduring and praying and fasting and you know I'm just and then I'm like, God, like, what's happening? What's going on? And then he shows up. Let me tell you, I th this is so, like, God is totally in control. So I went to the hearing, and she was given a list to write down of, um, of sanctions that she needs to do, of um, a list of of different requirements that she needs to get done by this time or you could get kicked out of this program and it'll be taken to court and then you're dealt with some worse consequences and let me tell you the first one apology letter to your stepmother 150 words I'm telling you, when he, when I heard that, when I heard this man say an apology letter to write an apology letter to me, I literally felt, whoosh, like the Holy Spirit, the warmthness, the comforting blanket of God that was just over me. Like that was, this is him, this, this is God, this is God right here. This is, I mean, this is his work. This is what he does. And then number two, an apology letter to your father, to her dad. And I know, see, God knows that there is a lot of hate in her heart for me and her father. Why? I don't know if it's from the past or what, but, like, this is just... I mean, can you not see what God is doing? And then an essay of why shouldn't you use illegal drugs? And then she has a, a six o'clock curfew every night for three months. And she's supposed to help out around the house and do chores. Like I'm supposed to list uh, what she needs to do and have it done by. And, you know, I'm not going to be the evil witch stepmother that makes her do this and that. And no, no, I'm loving. I know what she has to go through. I'm merciful. You know, this is God's hand doing this. So I will let the Holy Spirit guide me and lead me of what is fair. You know, like, you know, dishes three times a week. I mean, I mean, just simple, easy, easy stuff. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not evil. You don't know, repay evil for evil. You know, you give good to those who do evil. <laughs> and so, and also uh, random drug testing. 
and then there's other stuff like com community service, um, mental health counseling, uh, Operation Right Track, uh, drug and alcohol awareness classes, teen court. Um, I mean, so she has like seven, eight, ten other things to do. And it seems like a lot, but this is God doing this. Like, and I'm going to give you some scripture here. So, Romans 12, 19, 21 says, Hold on. Romans 12, okay, 19. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. And, and then Ephesians 6, 2, 3 says, Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on the earth. So let me tell you, her real mother died almost a year ago. In September, it will be a year. And, you know, uh, her father is in prison. And, you know, so Amber is dealing with a lot. So I'm her stepmom. So her mom's gone. So therefore, she still needs to, to honor and obey me and honor and obey her father you know, and she is not doing that, and me and her father are children of God, we are warriors for the Lord, we are doing his work, you know, he had, God, Yahweh has raised up Scotty, has raised up my husband, where he is at now, and to be that man of God, to lead, to be that head of the house, to lead their family in the right direction towards Jesus, you know. And so him and I have been linking together and we have been praying for Amber. And so it's like God is saying, you know, these are children of God, you know, and you are to honor and obey them. You are to honor and obey them. And if you're not doing it, I'm going to discipline you. But I'm not going to discipline you in a bad way. I'm going to discipline you in a righteous way. To better yourself. And better yourself for me. For God. To receive all the glory. And I'm just like, wow. Lord, this is just amazing. So... Hebrews 12, 6 to 13 says, For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who was never disciplined by its father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best that they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us, so that we might share in His holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of living, of right living, for those who are trained in this way. So take a new grip, with your tired hands 
and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. So you see, I mean, God has given me this scripture. As all of this is happening, and I was in this hearing today, and receiving these instructions and th these directions of what Amber needs to get done. I mean, this scripture came to me. The, these scriptures came to me because God, vengeance is the Lord's. We don't, we don't need to take matters in our hands because we don't know what we're doing. We don't know what what the process is that needs to be done that will help the person that needs to be helped. <laughs> I hope I said that right. You know, God knows all things. He knows what can change a person. He knows, he, he, he can provide the help for that person and just what they need. So the first video got interrupted because my husband was calling and I got to talk to him and share with him what happened tonight. And and it just, you know, it it's just amazing because God is truly is in control. He truly has everything in his hands. And so when he, so as I, I'm telling my husband, you know, how when they said, when, when the man um, said, apology letter to the stepmother, I told him, like, there's this warm covering that just overcame me. And it felt like I was okay. Not I was okay, but um, it felt as if I could it was okay, that everything was going to be okay. I just felt comfort is what it was. It was a comfort feeling that I felt and that God is, truly has it, this in his hands. And I know that this project right now is not the only project that God has. He has many and he's doing many. He's doing everything, you know. He, everything is in his hands, directed by him, for his purpose and for his glory. And I know what he is doing with us, he is doing with other people too. He is probably doing it with your son and your daughter, your loved one, your friend. You know, God is in control and it's all in his timing and you just need to be still and trust him trust him and I do I God I trust you no matter how crazy it is you know I trust you and because I know I know that this is totally God right here I know it I know it the enemy got mad and Amber wasn't happy but the enemy was using Amber to try to get at me and cause me to get angry and let me tell you her and I traded some words, you know, I'm repenting right now that, you know, I have, mm, those were not pretty words either. They were very not nice and I mean, just this anger rose up and only the devil can do that, you know. And I don't even want to give him that pride, you know, because that I just don't. But I don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I wrestle against principalities and dark forces and the rulers of this nasty world you know this is where the devil this is the devil's domain and so yes I, I, I slipped I slipped and I shouldn't have said those things and I should have been more Christ-like but I mean it was just very difficult but you know what? I'm at peace with what is happening. Of This is finally happening. That God is totally in control. And I trust Him. So just trust in Him. Because 
everything is in his hands. So, yes, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. I love you all so much, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Okay, and so after the hearing was all done, we were on our way home, and I'm driving, and I look up in the sky, and it was so beautiful. The, on the way home, the sunset, it was gorgeous. I mean, the glory of God, and it was just so beautiful. So I recorded a little bit of what I saw, and but it doesn't define uh, how beautiful and amazing it was. And um, I also saw Jesus. I saw him in the sky. And it was like the formation of the clouds. It looked just like him. It had his beard and it had his hair, which is like kind of like my height, my length. And it was like, but it was like blowing, like blowing in the wind type of thing. And it was the formation of the clouds. And when I saw that, I felt this just comforting. Oh, and I felt the Holy Spirit. Mm. I felt this comforting just, just fall upon me that, you know, God is truly, you know, this is really him and that everything will be okay. And I mean, it was just so, I can't even explain it. I can't explain it. I can try to explain it, but it's not as good and as amazing as it was, you know. And so I just wanted to share that with you. I pray that um, it blesses you and it encourages you, you know, for your loved one and everything. So I love you guys. Good night.